I forgot to record. Oops. Oopsies. For those of you that uh, just joined in because I forgot forgot to press record, um, I this is the al fabulous album that we'll be creating tonight. And um, I'll show you the dimensions in a moment. But what you'll need just really quick again for the recording is you'll need Tim Holtz Ideology Ring Binders. You'll need um, some canvas, and this is gray taupey canvas that you can get at your art supply store. And then this is, sorry, the other way, is a printery uh, A4 paper stack, which is absolutely stunning. One of my favorite lines Prima ever came out with. Like, look at this one. Oh, love it. It's like, this is like hoard vault material. Is this not one of the most fabulous papers? Love, love, lovely. Look at this one. Yumminess. Look at that one. So we'll be using this collection, and I'll show you more as we go along, um, as well as several other things, but I'll do it as we go. How does that sound? Let's get started. So um, for those of you that missed the first part because I didn't press record, the dimensions that you're going to need out of chipboard, again, are 5 by 10 and a half, and 5 by 7, and 1 by 5. Okay, so those are the ones that you're going to need. All right, and so what you want to do is you want to take your canvas, and uh, for the purpose of time, what I did, um, and when you do this at home, what you want to do is you want to take your piece of chipboard, and you want to trace it, and what I like to do um, what I like to use actually is these are called um, these are awesome they're like uh, uh, what do you call them let me see like pastel chalk pencils and they work really great for tracing because you can erase them um, and they're not a pen whereas a pen sometimes is really hard to uh, write on fabric so these pastel uh, pencils work really really great so just these are just three different colors um, and so what I'm going to use is I'm just going to use um, a fabric um, scissor, and this cuts it really, really well. And the reason I'm using it, um, I'm tracing it, is I really want kind of a rough cut. If I show you this guy right here, do you guys see how it's like it's really rough and I've almost like pulled some of the fibers? I want it to be grungy. I want it to be like fibrous. I don't want it to be... Um, very straight cut so I'm not using like one of those fabric cutters on purpose so that I kind of have that rough cut that I can then kind of fray later so that's kind of the purpose of it okay and so I'm just gonna cut this with you any questions so far yes this one is five by seven the other one is 10 and a half by five or five by 10 and a half. And the other one is one by five. Okay. So those are the dimensions to create this mini album. And you will need those ring binders by Tim Holtz. And they're so awesome. And they're fairly inexpensive. Like they're for Canada. I mean, it cost me what, like five twenty-five, and you get two of them. So you can make two mini albums. That's pretty good. Um, so that's one. Poor Ava, you guys can't, you guys might not be able to hear, but she's, she has back surgery tomorrow, and uh, Curtis has to give her this um, special shower with this special soap, it's surgery soap, she hates it, it stinks, so she's screaming right now, and if you guys can hear it, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the one having to do that job today, usually I'm the one that has to endure that uh, painful ordeal so now daddy gets to deal with it okay so I'm just cutting this up really fast she'll be okay it's it's pretty standard for her even though you know it's hard but it's pretty standard for her anyway If you, yeah, that's true. If you have a small binder, you could remove the um, the rings, but it's a lot. That's a lot of work. I don't know. 
All right, so there's that one. And then last one is the really large one, which I'll cut up. So I kind of uh, measured it right before the show, or I traced it right before the show so that I could cut with you, so that I could show you me cutting it. Denim would be really fabulous too, for sure. You could use any fabric of your choice. Um, the reason I chose canvas or, you know, burlap or something like that is because they're really tough fabrics. And um, they'll take on, uh, because I created, I put quite a bit of uh, gesso and spray on this uh, canvas. I really wanted to make sure that I had a fabric that would really be able to take the type of amount of mediums that I was going to apply onto it. So that's kind of the reasoning behind it but you can use anything you want. You could use like, you know, linen would be really nice. You just have to be really careful because it would probably do some funky stuff uh, once you dry it. It'd probably wrinkle a little bit, um, maybe shrink a little bit. So you gotta just watch. That would be my only concern. Something to try for sure. Okay, I'm almost done here. It's your first time watching live streaming. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Really fabulous. Really, really fabulous. Okay. All right. Perfect. So all done. All done with that. And of course, save those fabric pieces. You can use them for absolutely something else. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my large pieces and I am going to cover... Um, both sides, of course, you need to cover both sides for sure, right? And um, what I like to use is I either like to use three in one or I'm just going to grab another new one. Um, here we go because I'm running out of this one. Uh, Beacon three in one or you can use Fabri Tac. Um, either one works really, really great. So um, whichever one is just perfect. And so I'm just going to go ahead and apply the glue right onto my chipboard. This one, like I said, is almost done, so we may have to switch to the next one. And what you'll see is, when I actually do this, what you're gonna see is that uh, some of the glue might show through onto the canvas, but I don't, through the canvas, but I don't really care because I'm gonna be covering um, the canvas with gesso anyhow. So, in fact, it'll just give it you know, just more funky, yummy texture. So I don't really care that much. Makes sense. See how you can see a little bit through? That's okay. And you know what? Once it dries, it actually uh, goes away. So it doesn't really matter. But what you do want to make sure is you do want to make sure that all the edges are actually um, covered. Okay. So that they're not coming through. I just want to make sure. I think I must have missed. Oh, no, I didn't. I thought maybe I mismeasured, but I didn't. I'm questioning my measuring because I don't usually measure anything. You know what I mean? So first I'm going to cover and then I'm going to fray. So I'm going to cover this part and then see some excess pieces. Sometimes I cut a little bit off. So then just go ahead and trim those little pieces off. And you need to use fabric scissors because um, I tried my wonderful Tim Holtz scissors, but Unfortunately, they didn't cut this type of fabric as well as, you know, just r regular fabric scissors. Did you guys see the hoarders video with the amount of scissors? And oh my gosh, it was Linda. She's so hilarious. I was like practically peeing my pants. If you haven't seen the video, you must see the video. It's just so flippin' funny. The fabric is, uh, Carrie's asking what the fabric is. It's, um, this is canvas. It's a gray taupey canvas that you can buy at your local uh, scrap, um, art supply store and it comes in giant rolls. So you can get them to, like you buy it like fabric, like wherever, you, when you go to um, like a fabric store, like Joann's or something, you can try going to Joann's or Fabricland or whatever fabric store you have. I'm not sure you'll find canvas. Um, you may, I, I just don't think so. Um, that's why I go to my local art supply store to buy canvas like this. Um, but you may find it. I'm not sure. It's something for you for sure to, to try and find. Okay. So I'm just making sure it's really, really down. Okay. <laughs> 
I know you didn't feel so bad after watching it. Was that not just so funny? Okay, just like that. It's really nice and down. And so now I just want to get rid of some of my imperfections here, my imperfect tracing patterns. No problem. And actually the more uh, imperfections, the better because you can kind of get that really funky frayed look. And so in order to get kind of that frayed look, oh look, what you want to do now is you literally like with your fingers, and I have nails, can you guys see? And you want to just almost start pulling on some of that fabric. Okay, and you want to get some of that frayed look. Okay, and then what I do at the end is I kind of cut the big pieces off. I just want some of the smaller ones, but that's kind of what you do to get that frayed look. And you could take scissors, like you could take your scissors, just watch your fingers please, and uh, fray it up, right? Just like that, and you get that wonderful frayed look. And just cut those big excess things right off, okay? And so you wanna do that all right here. Okay, just like that on all sides, okay? So that's one, and let's cover the rest of them, and then we'll put the album together. So we'll take that, take that. Whoops, my glue is dripping. Raise your glue, people. I am a crafty addict. <laughs> oh. That is so flippin' funny. Honestly, I was giggling to myself last night and then I went into bed and my husband was on his iPhone and I was like, honey, you have gotta watch this video. And he was actually chuckling, which I thought was pretty funny. So I'm not sure if he was chuckling because he's like, oh my God, woman, you waste so much of my money. But uh, he thought it was funny. Yes, for sure. The Prima tool. See, like I sometimes I forget, right? But yeah, you could look at look how yumminess that is. For sure, the Prima tool, right? And then you can go ahead and cut the excess off. Just like so. All right. I hate those little fibers. I don't know why. I just ugh. It's like they give me the creeps. Is that weird? Yep, it's weird. But you guys know I'm weird anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, just like that. And then we'll cover this up. Oh dear. And tonight you're going to have to listen to my uh, very loud uh, heat gun because um, on Tuesday's show, um, my Ranger heat gun uh, almost started on fire during the show. For those of you that were there, it was pretty um, intense. <laughs> I think I might have let out a curse word because <laughs> I thought I was about to burn the house down. <laughs> It was quite humorous. Uh, not sure what happened. So I apologize for the noise I will be making with my heat gun in a moment. Okay, so our last piece is right here. Whoops. There we go. And Yes, Vaughn, you don't have to tell all the secrets. It was very funny. I mean, I was a little bit freaked out. I was a little bit scared, to be honest with you. I was like, oh, a little bit nutty. go last piece and we are done with covering the canvas so before we put it all together what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and just sew it up because I think it'll be a little bit easier that way once it's kind of taken apart then uh, when 
it together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our Prima tool and just like you guys suggested and really distress the edges a little bit, rough them up a little bit. And what's really great about the three in one or the Fabri-Tac is that it does dry fairly quickly. So it's really great because you can work with that right away and do distress things like this um, fairly quickly. I love the little curlies. <laughs> Oh, me and my dirty mind. All right, let's keep going. It's a family show. Right now, I'm fraying. I'm creating the pieces for my mini album, okay? And this one we kind of already frayed, so it doesn't need too much more fraying. Okay, just like that. And I'm just going to add a little bit of blue right here because I see that it needs just a tiny bit. All right, just like that, fabulous. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna grab ourselves a little dish, okay? So you wanna grab yourself a little dish like this or any dish of your choice. And you wanna take some gesso, any gesso will work, uh, white gesso, this is just acrylic, artist acrylic gesso by Liquitex, but you can use any liquid gesso that you want to use, is just fine. And I'm applying about that much you can apply as much as you want. Now, for the next, this next technique, there are several different things that you can use, and I'm going to show you different variations um, so that you can kind of see the different things that you can use. Now, um, one of the things that you can use, and I'm going to show you on three separate pieces, one of the things that you can use, of course, is a dry brush. And this dry brush is more like a, those cheap... Um, like stipple type brushes, like the, the bristles are really, really hard versus like, you know, more of a really nice, you know, nice soft brush. Okay. So you want to take one like this. And the reason you want to do that is because it'll create like a more of a roughness on your canvas. And so you're going to dip it in your dish. And sometimes I just take some off on my actual plate. And then I kind of very roughly run my brush along my canvas. So there's that technique. Or the other thing you could do is you could take one of these. These are color shapers and they're rubber, okay? And you can get them um, where they're uh, firm, extra firm, or soft. This one happens to be extra firm, but it's still quite bendable. Um, and so you could uh, dip it into your dish. And then you kind of now have a little bit more control as to uh, where to put your gesso, okay? So it's just a different, it, it's just a completely different tool. And then last but not least, um, you can use one of the, these knives, right? And you just apply it on the knife and then you just scrape it along your canvas. So whichever tool you feel like using, by all means use, and you're gonna get, you know, a fabulous effect either way. I'm going to use the brush just because that's what I want to use tonight. Um, and so that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to cover as much of the canvas as I want to. Um, I'm not totally going to cover it up. Of course, I want to see some of the gray showing through. Uh, some pieces, I want to have them be darker than others. And um, I'm going to show you the finished product so that you can kind of see. In the finished product, as you can see, you can see lots of the gray, but then there's lots of little white blotches throughout right and you can see in the back as well okay so that's kind of the effect that i'm going for right now and i'm going to do that with all my pieces studio gesso is awesome by ranger this is just my giant bottle that um, i use here for my large canvases okay all right so that's pretty good i kind of like that um i'm pretty happy with that and um but what i want to do one last thing before i go on to the next one what i want to show you is one of the things that i just absolutely love to do is i love to take my fan brush this is just for an added effect and because this is like a really fluid gesso I want to load up my brush really, really well. I know the lighting can be a little bit um, off sometimes. Okay, you want to load it up really, really good. Make sure your computer is like completely out of the way. 
And then you just want to flick a whole bunch of gesso on the, whoo, I just got it on myself. See, this is what I mean. Um, you want to just flick and that's how you get those cool, um, you know, drip marks throughout your project. Okay. So that's just a little technique. And then I'm going to set this on the side while I do the other ones for a moment because we're going to have to do both sides anyway. So I'm, I am going to have to use the heat gun in a moment anyhow. Yep. Studio Ranger at uh, studio is, is almost everywhere. If, if a store carries Ranger, I can almost guarantee they'll carry the studio line of gesso and they have the gel medium and things like that. Okay. So check it out. And it's, it's actually really fabulous. Um, gesso. It's really nice and thick. It covers really, really well. And I like that it comes in a pot because then you can just kind of dip versus having to, you know, put it on a, on a dish. But, you know, whatever suits your needs is simply fine. Simply, simply fine. And then, of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of flickering. Okay. Just like that. But just on the front here, because I know that's pretty much all I'm going to see. Over here, there's going to be the flowers, so I'm not too worried about putting too many splatter marks right there. And I'm going to set this one off to the side for a moment while I just do my inside piece. We have a tool for that, just like we have an app for that. <laughs> Are we back onto the hoarders? <laughs> okay, so what I want to do right now is I just want to give this, whoops, my heat gun is in the wrong place, you see, because it's a different one. And so I want you to excuse uh, the loud uh, sound at the moment that I'm going to be uh, heating this up, but it's got to dry. Any questions so far since I'm reading the chat at the moment while I'm drying? This dries really, really quick, by the way. See, this one's already dry. <laughs> I think my great-grandchildren are going to inherit all my crafting stuff. Is it really quiet? Oh man, I find it so loud. Maybe because I was used to the Ranger one. You know, one of the cool things um, that I love to do, and I mean, this technique is old as heck, but um, if you take your heat gun, I hope you guys can hear me. If you take the heat gun and you get it really close to all the bubbles that you did, you can actually watch them bubble and they create some wonderful texture but just watch not to burn your house down so don't leave it on there for too long <laughs> been there done that right okay so this one's pretty dry and i'm like kind of like popping some of those bubbles with my fingers Last piece. This one's pretty dry. Last piece. There it is again. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm just gonna do the back side really quick and dry this up. All sides need to be done, right? Oh my gosh, I'm laughing right now because I just made a boo-boo with my, um, yep, I did. I made a total boo-boo with my, um, with my album, but that's okay. I will tell you the boo-boo that I just made. This is what happens when you are uh, recreating a project sometimes and you forget. I'm not going to do the backside of this and I'll tell you why in a moment. Because <laughs> Miss Lee Moore made a total boo-boo, but that's okay. All right, so before we uh, fix my boo-boo, um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, create the um, the cover, okay? And then we'll fix the boo-boo when we put the, um, the project together. And then you guys will absolutely totally laugh at me. It's a, it's a very silly, simple boo-boo, but it's a boo-boo. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this up just for one second. Not sure how I made that mistake. That was pretty dumb of me, but that's okay. Just a moment, um, a moment of craziness. It's been a little bit of a, a crazy day around this house. Anyhow, so here's the products that we're going to use. Oh, okay. Hey, Peggy, how are you? All right. So the products that we're going to use, there are several flowers. And um, we're going to use this wonderful, wonderful ribbon. And this ribbon is, this lace, I should say, is um, 545420. Look how pretty that is. Okay, absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to use a little bit of that. And um, the flowers that we're going to use tonight, some of my absolute favorite flowers, honestly. They're just, they're so, such yumminess. I'm just grabbing them all from my box. And they are, this one right here, we're going to use one of these right here, is... Um, La Belle Calypso, and it's 565-909, okay, awesome, and um, this wonderful one, hold on, let me take the elastic off, this gorgeous one, one of my absolute favorites, is the Odetta Aqua, which is 566-586, there's that one, and then we're going to use several of these, um, I love these, they're like classics, but they're called Mini Sachet Winter, and it's uh, 565992, so we're going to use some of the beautiful little gray ones, and then um, these are a little bit older, um, they're those beautiful Splendor leaves, a little bit of an older collection, um, 553609, and are these doubles, and the rest, oh, and then last but not least, um, these package, this package right here, which is the Frost Snowdrop Roses, which is 565-756. Okay, so those are the ones that we're going to use. All right, and um, like I said, we're going to use the printery uh, paper, which I had shown you earlier, but for those that were a little bit late to get on the show, no problem. I'll just show them to you really quick and this is this happens to be the printery a4 paper stack okay and it's so so pretty and so you can kind of see i'm going to turn it on to the side because i think you can see it a little bit better um but like the paper is just so stunning like look at that gorgeousness this one one of my absolute favorites on here And look at that. This one, I mean, I just love, love, love that. So lots of lots of yummy papers. And so one of the ones that we're going to use tonight is um, this one right here. And uh, I've actually cut this little tag out already. So I did that so you wouldn't have to watch me fussy cut. Okay. So I have that right here, just like that. And then the other one that I wanted to cut out is the spoon from this guy right here and this paper is right here so I cut this spoon out 
as well as this little um, clock. Okay, so those are the ones that I cut out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to take our little spoon and I didn't cut it all the way. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to fussy cut him out. And sometimes, you know what's really great about uh, papers that have really fabulous images, you guys, is that we don't always have every single embellishment um, that we want. Like we may be missing some chipwork pieces from the collection or something like that. So this is just a really fabulous alternative to, um, to having those embellishments. You can just literally fussy cut them away, especially when they're images such as this, which take like, you know, a minute just to fussy cut them out and you can just pop them uh, with a pop dot and then it just totally looks like chipboard or you could even mount them on chipboard, right? So sometimes we just can't have it all, right? So those are the pieces that I'll be using and as you can see this is the the project. So this here's the spoon and here's the clock, okay? All right, and so what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to apply my flowers and um, before I do that one of the things that I didn't show you that I was going to use is, I think actually Carrie used this in her last show. It's so fabulous. Um, this is the Resist Canvas. It is fairly old. Um, and um, it, there's some beautiful little uh, vines and such. Um, the, let me see. The number is 551629. And so I'm going to pull one of these out. And you only need like a little bit. You don't need too much. This is about perfect. Okay. Just like that and I'll, I'll grab a second one just in case just in case we need it and I'll put it off to the side sometimes I like to add extra things to my projects for fun and then what you're gonna need is I like to use um, the one that goes really great with the flowers that I'm using is the uh, ink build balm quick dry uh, fluid chalkings and this is the pastel green and so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna move this off to the side and you're gonna need a little bit of water so I like to grab, where is my, here we go, my little brush, and I've got a little bit of water right here, okay? And what I actually like to do is I actually like to, you could spray them, which actually, why don't I do that? I think it'll be a little bit easier. So take a little mini mister, okay? And I like to spray them first. And so there's different ways you could do this. You could take your actual chalk ink and you could just actually run it right across. And if you didn't want that to get wet, you could just put it on your craft mat, like just like this, and you could take your paintbrush and paint it on. It's going to take a little bit longer, so I don't necessarily recommend it. This is just fine. And I find that uh, when you wet it, it takes on the ink even nicer. Okay. So I just do that, and it's really quick. Okay. And it doesn't hurt the pad whatsoever but it has such a beautiful color and I'm just going to show you and lift it up. Okay. And I know it's hard to see because of the light. Can you guys see the resist a little bit? Hard to see in the light, but it's got this beautiful resist going on. Okay. And to really allow the resist to pop, sometimes I just take a paper towel or a uh, baby wipe and I wipe some of that color off and I find that the white really starts to pop. Can you see that? I don't know. It's probably hard to see. So just take my word for it. Take my word for it. I don't lie. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a quick heat set so that I can apply this right onto my project. Okay. And my heat gun went where? Here we go. Oh, do I use an alt light? Um, yeah, I have an alt light right above me. And then I have a professional, um, what do you call them? Like a camera light or video light or something like that here in the studio that's kind of like above I don't, you can't see the camera but it's like above me does that make sense Okay, that's how quick it dried. Holy moly, that was fast. Okay, so that dried really, really quick, which is really great. So I'm going to be using this on my canvas, and really, I love to cut this puppy up. <laughs> I just love 
to cut this puppy up. So um, what I'm going to do is, what I like about this is that once it's dry, I can actually go ahead and make some of the edges a little bit darker. Okay, because I diluted some of it with water, I can now go with my edger and make some of those edges just a little bit darker and it gives it a little bit of a pop. I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but that's kind of what I like about it. Um, really, really fun. These chalk edgers are like just so wicked. I use them now for everything, everything. And I just have to say, this is totally off topic, but my favorite color, I know this is crazy. It's old road and it's a gray black. It is just, I don't know. I need like 20 of them because I'm going through it like water. So totally off topic, but I needed to share that. I needed to share my addiction, right? Because hold your glues up high, people. I am a scrapbook addict. Darn it. Right? All right. Now, let's take our flowers. And the first one that I'm going to take, I always like to start, people ask me about flower placement all the time. And one of the things that I like to do is I always like to start with my largest flower first. Okay. And I'm using the smaller version of the largest, but this is my largest flower on my project. So that's the flower that I'm going to use. Okay. And then I like to go with my second most, um, you know, my second one, my second largest flower, which would be this one right here. And I already gave you the names, right, of these flowers. So I don't need to do that again. Okay, so we'll take that one. And then we're going to take one of these guys. And I'm kind of going to take the cream colored one. That's right. You <laughs> YouTube and Ustream say you need it. You got it, baby. And then I'm going to take one of my gray ones. Just like that. And then last but not least, I'm going to take some of my little ones. So usually what I do is I like to grab all my flowers first. I cut them all up and then I go ahead and I place them because I find it a little bit easier. So uh, I'm going to take a couple, one and two, just like that. Okay. So now I have a couple and I can go ahead and put these packages away because do you ever find that your craft space gets cluttered? It's because you have like a hundred packages of things open, don't you? Okay, well, me too. So I'm going to try a new thing, okay? And that is to try and unclutter my area. And then what you want to do is you want to take some of these fabulous leaves, okay? So, um, you know, it doesn't really matter. They're all beautiful. And look how shimmery they are. Can you see the shimmer? Oh, so pretty. So, so pretty. So I don't know. You want to take, I, I think I cut them in half. I did. I was very smart. I cut some of these in half. You might not need to do that today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first one and I am going to, I don't even remember how I did this. So I'm just going to create, create, um, again, the first thing actually that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these leaves right off of this guy. Okay. I kind of want these leaves to be poking out. So I'm actually going to cut that little thing right off. I don't like that thing. And these two leaves are going to poke out just like that. Okay, and this one actually can come off right too. Come on, baby, come out. There we go. These are going to come right out. And this doesn't have adhesive. This actually holds it together. So don't try and peel this off or your canvas will fall apart. Just saying. Okay. It's going to go about right there. Just like that. You can even have it poking out. Okay. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is going. And then you're going to have one of the leaves just kind of poking out right there. And then as soon as we're done the cover, we're going to go ahead and do the maybe one or two pages on the inside. We'll do them fast. Okay. And then we're going to add this guy right in the middle or right on top of that. Oh, this glue is hard to get out. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to take this guy and we're going to tuck him right underneath this guy. I'm going to move him off to the side just a tiny bit so that we can go ahead and add him. And I know sometimes you guys get all weird about hiding your flowers, but that's, you know, that's kind of what layering is all about. 
So don't get weird on me, okay? Just let, just, just tuck them. And if you want to maximize your leaves, cut them in half, okay? I just wanted to show you that little trick. I know I do it all the time, and you guys have probably seen it a million times, but not everybody's watched my shows. So um, it's just one of those things I do is I cut my leaves when I don't have enough of them. It's not the case here today. However, something that I wanted to show you. And then I'm going to tuck this one kind of like right there, okay, just like so, just like so. And then I'm going to take this little guy that's left over, and I'm going to kind of have him tucked between this guy. It's going to come out in a second. He's kind of going to come right here, and this guy's going to be tucked right underneath him. Okay. Going pretty fast, which is good. Okay. I want to have enough time to do the pages inside, so I'm kind of motoring, and my little screw up is going to cause me some time. Don't know what I was thinking. Okay, just like that. And we're going to tuck him. We don't want to see that white leaf too much, just a little bit. Just tuck him a little, little bit in. And then you want to take your little guy. Okay. Sometimes I don't take the wiring totally off. Sometimes I find that it helps even glue some of those in. Okay, just like that. And then this guy will go right on the top. About right there. To balance the page out just a little bit. And if you have extra pieces, by all means, tuck them in somewhere. I just happen to have some extra ones, so I could, you know, kind of tuck them in right there. So I'm going to do that just for fun because I don't want to waste it. Okay. And it just gives it another little element. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Is that not the cutest? And you see how beautiful, like how fun it is to have those cool little brush strokes, right? Really cute and really simple, right, you guys? Super simple. So what you want to do is um, now I'd like to uh, go ahead, in order for it to kind of blend in together, um, you can go ahead and take your little chalk edger and just go around the edges and it kind of ties it all together. I know the camera lighting is a little bit off, so you are going to, um, oh, excuse me, you're going to, you know, you're not going to see it that much, but trust me, it's there. And so now what I want to do is I want to tuck, because that clock is kind of half cut right there, you want to be able to tuck that in behind your photo, okay? So we're going to do that. I'm just going to grab my three dots that are, they were right behind me. I want to pop this up just a little bit. So I'm going to use just some foam dots. These are black. You can use white. I don't, it doesn't really matter. Um, how much would it cost to make this product? Hmm, good question. Good question. I could price it out for you at the end of the show. Uh, that's a very good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I really, I really, really don't know the answer to that. Okay. And then I'm going to tuck this in right here. Just like that. Okay. Fabuloso. And then I want to take my spoon. Where did my spoon go? Right here. And I'm going to add a little foam dot right there. And I'm just going to grab one of my little ones as well. I'm going to tuck him about right there. Okay, can we see that? That's all with paper, right? Like super cute and easy. Okay, and the next thing that you want to grab is you want to grab the two, um, our little uh, canvas pieces, our canvas letters, I should say. And the ones that I'm going to use are, um, these are the Sunrise Sunset stickers, okay? And the number is 562984. And I have an open pack right here, so I'm going to use that right now. And, oh, I just lost some letters. And we're going to write our moments together. And the reason that I picked our moments together, because it's actually really easy to um, be able to put any kind of photos that are with anyone. Because 
who knows, right? Like you take photos with tons of people together, right? So our moments together can be about anyone <laughs> at any time. It could just be moments with people together, right? So um, I just kind of wanted an album that I could just put random photos that kind of really um, expressed the colors that I love and things like that. So that's why I wrote that, if you're wondering. And I'm trying to find an M, and I may need to go, oh, no, it's right here. It's a W. Will a W work? Probably not. Let's grab an M from the other one. I'm running out of M's. Sometimes W's work, but I have another pack, so that's why it's here. Correct? Correct. Okay, so we're going to tuck him in quite far in so that um, our moments actually fits. Okay. Um, and then we'll go lowercase from there. Okay. And we'll do M-O. I love these canvas letters. Like, I... I have so many of them because you can use them for anything, you guys. Mini albums, layouts, like you name it. It doesn't matter. Oops, that's upside down. And I find that if you don't press too hard, you can kind of remove them if you uh, make a mistake, which I happen to make often. It's kind of like the thing I do when I create. I make mistakes. I really do. This is not going to fit. Look at that. I just said I'm, I make mistakes all the time. And um, I just find that this is this is a little bit too... Mm, this is going to be off the page, but that's okay. No worries. You guys know what the regular one looks like. It's harder to do something uh, on camera fast and well. <laughs> Moments. I'm just grabbing the tea. And the S will be a little bit off, but that's okay. That's okay. I'll give this one to my mom. <laughs> so some of it will be covered, but that's all right. Okay, so our moments, and it's a little bit wonky, but that's all right. All right, and then together, I used this. Oh, I'm just grabbing it. It's behind me. And I'm not sure where the packaging went for this, but um, we put the um, we put the name for you on the site. But they're um, the other sticker sheets by Prima, um, and this will say together on the bottom. Okay, so we'll go like that. And I'm going to move this water away from my computer. How does that sound? That sounds pretty fabulous to me. And what I love about these is the different sizes. They're so much fun to play with. Okay. Together. T. We need a T. Okay. And we need an H. Where's the H, baby? Here it is. Together. One more E and one more R. Here we go. Here we go, baby. Here we go. Here we go. All right, last bit. Simple. Oh, what's happening to my R's? There we go. All right, so that's perfect. All right, so that is our front cover, right? Really, really easy, right? That was fairly fast, somewhat. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you want to take, we're going to create um, the fastener. Like, how do we close this mini album, right? So we want to take, which went somewhere. I'll put it somewhere. It went somewhere, and I don't know where it is. So, oh, here it is. So what you want to do is you want to take these adhesive book. Um, they're like those, what do they say? Adhesive hook and loop dots, right? They're the Velcro stuff, and you can buy this at your local dollar store, all right? And so what you want to do is you want to apply the negative and the positive. I'm going to use a black one this time because I used a white one earlier, but we're going to use a black one for fun because this album has black, so I think it's perfect. So it doesn't matter which end you add. 
but then the other end that you're going to add later you want to make sure that it lines up so what i like to do is i'm going to i'm not quite going to do this now but you want to almost put it together and then um and then put it on the other one and i'll show you how to do that in just a moment if that didn't make sense what i just said ignore it okay so that's that and we're going to leave it just like that okay and so now what we want to do is we actually want to put our album together and remember i said i made a total and complete utter boo-boo yes i did i really really did it was just one of those really dumb moments that i was going through so ignore some of the process of making this mini album and you can you can hit me later okay no problem i'm just moving some things out of the way so that we can actually put this puppy together so hang on a sec let's move this all right fabulous now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to grab some more fabric and the reason for that is because you actually will need a piece of fabric that will cover this piece this piece and this piece i'm serious so it'll have to cover this this and this does that make sense yes okay and because i screwed up what i'm going to do is i'm going to tuck some of that fabric right here but it should be one fluid piece makes sense and i'm hoping that it doesn't break on me and so i'm just going to cut some fabric give me one second it'll be fairly quickly because i'm using these fabulous fabric scissors okay it's a major screw up in the in the uh, prima world right now <laughs> in the limor world right now so what you want to do is we're going to take this piece right here and we're going to apply it down and so this piece technically is supposed to be covered all the way but we're actually going to cut a piece and just apply it right underneath so it's not it's not a worry it'll still really work okay and so we're going to so I just wasted some fabric. That's really all I did. Okay. And now this is not working on me. Where's the other one? Did I not have another blue? Here it is. Okay, just like that. It was supposed to be a really simple album until I, you know, ruined it on you guys sorry about that okay so just like that okay and then we're going to take this piece right here I know I wasted just so I wasted so much stuff and then do you see how I lined it up you just want to leave just a tiny little bit okay not too too much not too too much okay and then this piece is going to go right here but we're going to cut just a little piece off okay so we're going to take our fabric scissors because we're not going to need too too much we're going to throw that piece out and what we're going to do is we're going to cut all of this out Okay, just like so. Fabulous. Okay. So in the perfect world, this should have been, so I can still lift this because I'm not, I didn't glue it. Uh, the glue is not quite dry yet. So I can still go ahead and lift this right up and glue this down which I am totally going to do. And I'm gonna cut a little bit more off, just a little bit, okay, just like that. And I am gonna apply glue about right there. And I can cut some of that excess pieces off. Did I just, yep, that's right. I just wanted to make sure I was doing, uh, yep. Okay, just like that. Fabulous. And as long as it's fairly close, Perfect. Just pushing it as much as possible. Awesomeness. I actually really like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut the excess pieces off. Hopefully, I didn't screw you guys up way too much. But now we have an album. Yes? 
right? Because now it's sealed all the way through. Correct? Did you guys get that? Yes, I hope so, right? So now we have a full album. Don't worry about um, all those fabric uh, pieces that you, or the glue that's coming through the fabric. That'll be covered anyhow right now with some of the gesso that we're going to put on. Okay, so no worries. So let's do some of our very quick gesso process, really, really quick, uh, just to cover this puppy up, right? Because we need to do that. Otherwise, it's not going to seem seamless, right? Woo! That squirted out. No problem. I'll use it later. <laughs> Yikes, carambas. Okay, so now what we want to do is we just want to take... We want to take a dry brush, not a wet brush like I just did. And we're just going to get the back side really, really nicely. Awesomeness. Just like that. And then you can still splatter, right? Take your paintbrush and still splatter. Okay, let's give this a very quick heat set. Any questions, everybody? This is the back side. Yeah, this is the front side. Okay, so I'm not worried about drying it all the way. Now, the last, last thing that I want to do up here so that um, everything kind of blends together is what I like to do is I like to take my ink dauber and I take that just like this, okay? And um, I also like to apply a little bit of water on top of it, okay? And a little bit more. And these, do you notice how juicy these puppies are? They're so great. And I just take a little water brush and I apply a little bit of it on here. And I know that because it's so light, the camera doesn't pick up the color of it. It almost looks white, but it's not. It's that gorgeous um, pastel green teal um, that it shows up, which is really, really lovely. And then to add a little bit of shimmer, what I like to do is I like to take my Lindy Stamp Gang, and this is a Royal Emerald Fire Glitz. And I just give it a little bit of, is this one pretty much empty? Yeah, I tried to use it last night and it was pretty much gone. But it gives it the most yummy shimmer. And I kind of, you can kind of go everywhere. And you can even go and a little bit on the back. Come on, baby, come out. There's like literally nothing left in this thing. And I know you guys can't see it very well. But it's super, super shimmery. And so we'll give it a one last quick heat set. I don't know. Does the shimmer pick up on that paper? Let's see. Not sure. So gorgeous. Yes, um, the pastel green is one of the newest colors. Okay, and now what you want to do is now you want to take your um, fabulous ribbon, okay? So we're going to take our ribbon, and do you see the, the thing here? We're going to run that through. Actually, and before we do that, let's go ahead and put our binder ring. And so what you want to do with the binder ring is I actually like to put the binder ring, the, uh, the brads, right through. Okay, and I'm actually not going to punch a hole. This is how I like to do it. But by all means, you guys do it whichever way you want to do it. I actually like to just open them up because I'm not, I'm going to, it's like they're going to be faux, faux, um, they're going to be faux, uh, what do you call them? Brads. I don't really want to use them as brads. Okay. And then I actually like to take my three in one. Okay. And I actually like to apply a schwack of glue or 
what's really cool that you can do instead of the three in one is you can take your um whoops you can take your quick drip okay from beacon as well it's this is like a metal glue and you can apply that right on there just like so okay don't worry about that little mess right there just dries right up okay and now you have your and that little piece can be tucked in that little brag piece can either be cut off or tucked in but i'm not too worried about it right now okay and i'm just holding it tight for a, just a moment and i'm going to cut some ribbon to do the next piece it's about that much not really measuring just doing it because i want to do an inside page and i know we're running a little bit out of time Sometimes it's hard to uh, judge how long things are going to take, especially if you screw up like me. Okay, I'm just holding this down for a second. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to take my ribbon and I'm going to put it right through. Do you see that little space right there? That ugly space? No worries. So I kind of did that on purpose because I want to create that beautiful long bow in the back. And I probably grabbed a very long piece of ribbon, which I didn't need to do, but that's okay. And you just tie a cute little bow. And you guys know me, I'm not the big, best bow maker, but you don't have to be when using ribbon like this because it's like a, it's like a flowy bow. That's, that's, it's lace, it's, it's, it's a flowy lace bow. You know what I mean? And then cut those excess, excess pieces off. And then you want to do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, just like so. Whoop, flip it around. Move that out. This will dry up. You won't see half of this stuff when it's done. And then you have this gorgeous, gorgeous backside. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? I just, I love the little flowy bows and you can really move these around, right? But isn't that gorgeous? I just love that. Love, love, love. Okay. And in order to do the inside right here, we're going to use the same ribbon instead of using the one that I used. And to cover this up right here, I'm going to use some, uh, this is for the, from the Fairy Rhymes collection and it's the um, fabric tape or like washi style tape. And so I'm just going to apply a little bit, whoops, a little bit on the edge, right there. And it just kind of finishes it up. And this is fabric, which I really love. So you get fabric and washi together. So just like that, and then you can apply, and this now bends, right? Like now you can really play with this because it's covered by fabric, so it's not gonna go anywhere. Nothing's gonna happen to it. So now this really, really bends. And then you can apply some wonderful lace right on the top, which I'm going to do right now. Okay. Just like so. And I know I'm totally getting to that time. How am I doing on time? Let me see. Ooh, I better motor. Okay. I better, better motor. Just like that. Fabulous. I have so many glues going on at the same time here. It's hilarious. My fingers are so sticky. Sticky, sticky, icky. Okay. And so this now bends. And then you're going to apply the other little dot, right? The opposite side right about there but before i do that what i like to do is i apply it on here and i actually apply more glue to it okay and then now i bring this down that's how my closure goes and i hold it until oops this is coming off i hold it until it's really nice and dry okay but for now i'm just going to take it off and let it dry later because I want to do some of the inside pages okay so did you guys did you guys get anything out of that right really really easy to create right really cute inside really easy really grungy yet nice and soft right okay 
Now, the next thing that you want to do is the inside pages. Now, to do the inside pages, oh my gosh, these are so flipping easy, you guys. It's so, so awesome. And I'm going to show you how to make them, okay? Now, what you're going to need is, I'm going to show you a couple things. You're going to need, I'm just going to, I'm just trying to grab them because I shoved them when I screwed up. Okay. You're going to need two different things. One of them is going to be, these are so awesome. Um, these mixed media album photo sleeves by Prima and you get like six photo sleeves. Like you get tons in here. There's tons of them and the, they look like this. Okay. Like they have one, two, three, four, and then these tiny little ones right here. And then you also want to get the ones that are just the two four by six photos in them, right? That just have the four by six and then four by six. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these and you're going to take one of these guys. And I'm going to show you how to cut them up so that they fit in your albums. And you can customize your albums as you wish, okay? So what I did with this one, this one right here, this page is super easy to make. It's the um, bottom of this guy right here. And so in order for it to fit, what you want to do is <clears throat> you want to uh, measure your, this is uh, like four by six, if I'm not mistaken. And this fits like right in here. Okay. So. I've cut this in, I've taken, actually, this is what I've done. I've taken this guy first, okay? And I cut this right at the seam line, right in half. That's what I did first, okay? So now you have two pages. Don't worry about the holes here. And the reason I don't worry about the holes is because I've just taken a strip of paper and I've covered that right here. So what I can do is I can then punch holes wherever I want it to fit my album, which is really easy. So now that you have these two sleeves, you want to take this guy and kind of measure it out. So about right there, I can go ahead now and cut my page, right? So about right there, I'm going to cut. Measure it out so that it kind of fits and cut it right out. And what's really cool is now you have two different types of uh, transparencies. And then with this guy, you can have it be so that you can tuck some things in here, okay? Like a, like a different type of pocket, right? And, or sorry, this way, sorry. You can have photos in here, and then you can have some fun stuff tucked inside right here as well. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So let's create a page that's really easy just like this, okay, to go inside the mini album. So what you want to do is you have the option of, of course, having your printer cut little photos, print little photos for you that kind of fit into these four little, um, you know, things, right? But for this piece right here, it's really easy. You just take any old paper, right? Your paper from your um, collection that you want, okay? So let's use... Um, Let's use this one right here for fun. Okay, we'll use this one. And they are two and three quarters. And I just cut slightly less so that I can actually fit them in because sometimes they're a little bit harder to slide in. Two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Okay, I have an R floating around. Just like that. And then I can go ahead and tuck them right in. My fingers were not glued together. Okay. And you just slide them literally right, right in. Okay. It's kind of like little project life. Not that it's, that's not really, um, that's a separate brand on its own, so I shouldn't really call it that, but you know what I mean, right? That's kind of what everybody's into right now. It's that type of project, okay? Project, what do you guys say? Project, project? Not that you guys can answer me very well. Okay, right? Just like that. 
Okay, so now we have those two spots filled and now you can go ahead and stick your photos, right? And then you can take a different pattern paper. So I like this one right here, just a little bit of some scraps. And this one's about, I believe it's about an inch. Maybe a little bit, inch and a half. I can always cut it. And I can go ahead and place him right on top. No, he's he's more than that. He's more like uh, maybe a, ooh, about that much. Okay. Just like that. And I can cut that excess piece off. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some glue. We're almost done, you guys. Thanks for sticking with me. Okay. Just like that. Okay. And then we'll cut that off. Okay, just like that, right? Oops, this piece is a little bit. There we go. Okay, pretty cute, right? And then what we want to do is we want to take another little piece for the edge here. And I want a little bit of a contrast. So because I want a little bit of a contrast, I'm going to do it in black. And that's about, I don't know, one inch, I would say. So I'm going to take... at about one inch okay. and I lost the reason I'm kind of uh, messed up with my cutting skills is because I lost my Tim Holtz scissors this week I have no idea where they went to not a clue seriously I'm just like baffled as to where they would have gone okay just like that and then cut the excess off and so now what you can do is you can take your crop a dial, which I had set on the side, which is right here. You can take your crop a dial, and now what you want to do is you can now go ahead and line it up with your holes, right? So I like to always have kind of a pen beside me, and I kind of like to say, okay, well, the hole is about, I have to do a little X about right there, and then a little X about, you know, right there. It's really hard to see black, so maybe I'll do red, because knowing me, I won't be able to see. Red right there, and red right there. Okay, fabulous. So then I can go ahead and take my crop a dial. One, two. Okay, and now I have the cutest little page, if I can open this up, that I can put in my album right and I can slide my photos right in and you can make a whole bunch of these now what do you do with the back side of these what's really fun is that you could actually tuck one more piece of paper pattern paper just like this on the opposite side so that you now have two different pages does that make sense and do the exact same thing on the other side so you'll have two pages out of one sleeve like how super easy is that so there's not a whole lot of work and all you need to do here is you can do all your journaling right here and your photos can be small like the ones that I printed here I'm going to show you I have a home printer that I can print I'll show you these tiny little photos and so my photos now can slide right in right really easy I can crop that top part off right but they can slide right in and they have a beautiful little background and then I can go ahead now and I can just write my little story right like so this is so so easy and of course there's the other style that you could do with um, the four by six right with this guy and I know we're running a little bit out of time Carrie's gonna kill me but I'm gonna show it anyway really really quick but what you can do is you can actually take some gesso and I'm just gonna take this do this really quick but you can you know take some gesso and just some really fun stuff on the acrylic and this is like super super quick easy peasy um, page and you want to dry this up really really quick Carrie's like ah 
don't do another page. But I just want to show you, this is just a totally different variation. Um, exactly. I have it totally carry. I have the A4 pad so it doesn't have um, the double sided papers. But you got to watch because it'll curl this up. So just watch your heat gun, right? So don't get too close. I got a little bit too close at the end. So don't do that. Otherwise, it'll curl up like it just did right now. So that's just something to watch for. Not that it really matters, especially if it's a mixed media project. But then what you want to do is you can take your photo, right? And do like a cute little, you can do a cute little collage on your, uh, you can even spray this, right? You can do a little. right and have a little bit of drippage and then add your photo so this is more um, of a mixed media type page but of course I'm not gonna finish right now because I know it's a little bit late and Carrie's gonna kill me if I go any longer <laughs> no she won't kill me but you guys I, I don't want to lose you so um, I just want to make I hope you enjoyed the project um, I hope you learned something today and uh, I just have a couple announcements so I'm just going to um, change the camera view let me see here for a second. Okay, can you guys see me okay? <laughs> Time to shop. Okay, so here's a couple announcements. Um, there's not going to be a show on Tuesday because we are at CHA. Okay. Um, however, I will be putting on the Prima um, on the Prima YouTube channel. I'll be doing an actual. Uh, YouTube tutorial. So I'll have a layout that I'll be doing on the, um, oh, not layout, I'm sorry, tags, Prima tags on the, um, on the uh, Prima channel, YouTube channel. And Carrie, if you want to put the YouTube channel link for them, so I'll have that on Tuesday. Um, I'll set it so that when I'm in Vegas, it just kind of comes on. And, uh, well, my face is shiny. And uh, Steph Miller is going to be on July 25th. 6:30 Pacific Standard Time with a beautiful tag holder. I'm sure it's fabulous. I haven't seen it, but you guys know Steph Miller is just so fabulous. So she'll have something really, really great for you. And don't forget, you guys, Art Venture is January 8th and 9th in Anaheim, California. Okay. And um, it is still light out in Edmonton. I know. It's pretty awesome, huh? I know it's like nine o'clock. And um what did I say? Art Venture, uh, January 8th and 9th, Anaheim. Who's coming? There's some fabulous, fabulous artists um, that are going to be uh, creating some fabulous projects. You certainly do not want to miss this. It's going to be so awesome. And, um, and I'll be there. I'll be there. I promise. And um, of course, last but not least, please, you guys go check out the Prima blog because all the sneak peeks are coming out this week. Uh, every day we have something new, so please go check it out. It's so awesome. I'm sure you guys are loving all the collections. What do you guys think of all the new collections? Do you love them? I, I'm i loving all the new collections. Loving. And I was even laughing because I don't have boys, and I actually really like the boy collection. <laughs> It's so vintage. It's so yummy. And I know that it's something that I can actually use, which is really funny. <laughs> Yay. Uh, you guys have to, if you're coming to CHA, I would love to meet you. I'll be walking around and yes, I'll come and stop at the Prima booth to say hi to lots of you, but um, I'm going to be doing a couple things with uh, Fabric Castell Design Memory Craft. Like just come, you know, come see me and I'd love to meet so many of you. <laughs> Did I miss anything, Carrie? I don't think so. I think I, I covered it all, right? <laughs> Thanks, Carrie, for your awesomeness as always. Sorry about my screw up, you guys, but I hope you guys still learned something. There's nothing like screwing up on camera. It's like, really? Like, did I have to do that right now? Come on. <laughs> like, what a... Oh.
Yes, thank you so much for coming. We had so many viewers on tonight. It was so wonderful, as always, to have you. <laughs> Yay. Was Sharon on tonight, too? I, I don't, was she on here? I can't remember. Oh, sure. One last look at the album. Okay, hang on. Let me show you the um, original. Can you guys see that? Oh, hang on. Can't see. There we go. Can you guys see that? Really cute, huh? And that's the backside. Really, really easy to make, right? It is, right? So hilarious. <laughs> Shiny face and all. Okay, good. Thanks, Carrie. I'm glowing. Oh gosh. Tomorrow, I have to be up at five, you guys, because I have to take Ava into the hospital tomorrow. Tomorrow's not going to be a fun day for me. So lots of prayers, please. <laughs> I, I almost don't want to go to bed because I don't want tomorrow to come, to be honest with you. So yes, thank, thanks for coming.